The River Rhine Rabbit is so rare that only a handful of people have seen one of these fluffy animals in the flesh. It is, after all, one of the most endangered mammals in Africa. Christy Bragg of the Endangered Wildlife Trust has only seen one live rabbit in the three years that she has been working on the River Rhine Rabbit program. The problem with the River Rhine Rabbit, it lives in very thick, thorny River Rhine shrub. So trying to find a River Rhine Rabbit is basically trying to find a needle in a haystack. And they are critically endangered, so they are very rare. So when we go out, what we used to do in the past, twice a year, we used to go do surveys, walking surveys. So that's a whole bunch of people would walk through the habitat, through the thick, thorny bush shrub, and um, we'd basically beat the bush and go, Kunane, 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 and see if we could flush them out. Um, and then we'd walk for 60 kilometers in five days. It'd be a hectic survey. And the problem was we wouldn't hardly ever pick them up. You know, sometimes you'd be lucky and one would flush from under your feet and you'd be able to count it and say where it is and whatever. But we found that just wasn't a satisfactory way to be able to monitor trends in the population. And it's a critically endangered species. We need to be able to monitor it. So we decided to use camera traps. Okay, that looks great. <coughs> City camera traps, which have been very kindly donated to us, and now we're going to find a statistical method to monitor trends in the population using camera traps. Oh, and we've got 340 photos. Oh, this is exciting. Camera traps are activated by movement and can be left out in the felt for weeks at a time, sometimes snapping hundreds of pictures before the team from the EWT's Dryland Conservation Program brings them back to their office in Loxton, where they are eagerly examined. Thought to be a nocturnal animal, these pictures of the River Rhine rabbit surprise Bonnie and Janice, clearly showing that they are quite active in the early morning. It's poppy. nice early morning light. This looks photoperfect. Look at him sitting in that little hole under the bush. So they spend the day there, hiding away. Oh, what look is at that? this one! What? Oh my goodness, that's a baby that's rabbit. A baby rabbit. That's incredible, baby. wow. When it comes to reproduction, the phrase breeding like rabbits does not apply to these shy little guys. A litter usually only consists of two to four rabbits, and in a river rind rabbit's lifetime of just four years, one female can raise 12 young at most. River rind rabbits are recognized by the dark line along their mouths, long ears, fluffy feet, and a brown coat and tail. Oh, look at this one, you can see the perfect brown and the tidy brown tail. It's hard to tell if it's the same bunny or not, because the river round rabbit is one of the few animals that doesn't have any distinctive markings yeah. to differentiate them from one another. And spots, no stripes, no nothing, they're just all brown. Exactly. Yeah. The river round rabbits have been pushed to the brink of extinction because of habitat degradation caused by people. Yeah, you might think, oh, it's just a cute fluffy bunny, he lives in the Karoo, who cares? But it's part of the ecosystem. And what's really critically important about it is that it's not only a globally special species, it's a top 10 edge species, which is an evolutionary distinct and globally endangered species. So it's genetically distinct, it's endemic, it's critically endangered, it only occurs here in the world. But it's also an indicator species. Sheep farmers who needed grazing land were the initial reason rabbit populations in the Karoo declined. But in the last 15 years, farmers have turned the tables and now cooperate with the River Rhine Rabbit program by monitoring them and restoring habitat. I have my dadelijk bullet ingeskakel, want I have beseft this is a kwestbare species and I have geen omvri omgeving and so on. And ons wil nie hy moet uitster. En natuurlijk vir my het dit niks gekost nie, dit was vir my baie makkelijk om my samenwerking te gee, want dit is vir my 'n baie wonderlike voordeel om hierdie gesogte dierkie, skaars dierkie op die plaas te hê. Farmers are amongst the very few people who actually get to see these elusive rabbits. Hy is 'n baie bonkig hasie. Hy haatloop nie vinnig weg soos 'n gewone haas nie. Hy spring van bos na bos. Hy het baie groot oore en is 'n baie wolrige haas. En as jy hom sien, slees sommer weer is nie gewone haas nie. Hy is uiteindelik baie dom en starig. Jy sien hulle nie dikwils nie. Ehm skemer aan sal jy van tyd tot tyd vir hulle in die pad kry en soos ek sê dan sit ook maar vlugtig. Sadly, one of the few ways of getting a physical sample of these rabbits is as roadkill, like this one, found between Beaufort West and Loxton. But as rare as they may be, 
these endangered rabbits are not shy on names. It's quite interesting because the name tells us a lot about the rabbit, firstly where it lives, and then a bit of a description on the rabbit as well. Um, it goes by Flay House, which refers to the riparian habitats that it lives in. So Flay in Afrikaans being sort of referring to a wetland area. Duke Fuiki, that's the Afrikaans name, referring to the nice soft pad of hair underneath the feet, which makes it easy for it to move in the soft alluvial soil where it lives. Uverkunain being the actual correct name, referring to the fact that it lives in the riparian areas along the banks and the floodplains of rivers. And then Pontas is quite an interesting one because at the turn of the century they were discovered and then the habitat was actually incorrectly described as being mountainous, which is what the species name Monticularis refers to. So for many years researchers were actually looking for them up in the rocky areas where you would find um, rock rabbits but not river run rabbits. And then at one point there was a a prize being offered or a reward being offered. If somebody could bring in a river run rabbit specimen, they would, get a, they would get a pawn. Four conservancies have been established on farmland in the area between Beaufort West and Loxton. Farmers get together regularly with the EWT to discuss what can be done to boost rabbit populations. At a recent workshop at the River Ryan Rabbit Retreat, farmers' management plans for protecting habitat were hugely aided when they received instruction in participatory mapping. We sat with the conservancies and we gave them each a map with spot 10 imagery and you can see they've clearly demarcated, for example, River Ryan Rabbit habitat, riparian condition, They've looked at degraded areas, they've um, plotted them, they've said what those particular degraded areas are, what the cause are, which is critical. If we know the cause, we can fix it, and we can fix it in the long term. The rehabilitation of degraded land is no small feat, and this task starts with the cultivation and restoration of naturally occurring plant species. Janice Essex, a field officer intern at the River Ryan Rabbit program, prepares seedlings, which are then taken out to replenish the degraded areas which the farmers have set aside for restoration. We have 10 key species that we propagate at the nursery, of which those 10 the River Ryan Rabbits use to form their flushes, which is the bushes that they normally hide in, and it's also bushes that they eat. These are very hardy plants. They can withstand extreme conditions, frosts, extreme droughts. They seem to survive, especially in the period. On the farm Sacrifier Spurt, Martin Skaltz set aside 100 hectares of riparian land to be restored for rabbit habitat. About 3,000 seedlings were brought from the nursery and planted into small micro catchments. The project is prachtig and we are very trots on what we have done. He has made hundreds of the gates. And the plantjes grow very well in this stadium, so we are very happy to see the fordering of the scene. The grass is in the hands of our boers. We don't want to see them, we don't want to see them. And we can say that we can do better in the field. And also other plantjes, such as for example, slagesters and rondloper hondes, as you can see, the farmers are incredibly enthusiastic, they're very passionate, they're very driven, and we want to work more closely with them to meet some of their needs so they can implement sustainable land management techniques, so they can help conserve the river and rabbit habitat. Other encouraging news is that more rabbits have been found in the Little Karoo, where the images from camera traps are showing some interesting behaviour in different habitats. This one is very interesting because you can see there are two rabbits. Now, I cannot tell you, we've had probably uh, zero images <laughs> from all our camera trapped images with two rabbits in it. Usually the male has a home range and lots of females inc incorporated into it. Now we're seeing them together in a very, very open area, nothing like what we've seen here today in, in Loxton. This video, you can see the rabbit eating. Now, I mean, this is just for me so exciting because we don't know what they eat and how do you find out where they eat? And now look, he's heard a sound, he's heard a sound, he's listening, he's a little bit wary, there are elephant, they are lying around, this is some born a wildlife reserve, but this is their like radar ears going, I love that image. <laughs> it's just different behaviours that we're seeing now and we haven't found a way to detect that before. When you've got good rabbit populations, it means that you are managing your fault well, that you are, you've kept those rivers intact and we need those rivers. We need those rivers for this country. Karoo is 30% of the landscape. We need to keep protect our, our livelihoods, we need to protect our land, we need to protect everything from climate change, because that's, a, that's the reality. So if you protect the rabbit, you're protecting 
at the wealth, the suite of Karoo species and people.